Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. And in this video, I'm going to show you a spider beam antenna. <laughs> and you'll say, wait, uh, don't they make antenna masts only? No, they actually make antennas. And this is an asymmetrical dipole. So basically an off-center fed dipole, multi-band antenna. So very interesting. It's quite small, actually. It doesn't weigh that much even comes with the coax. So on paper, this is pretty darn nice. Uh, well, there is one thing that I noticed immediately. <laughs> and I think, well, let's just say they did something wrong uh, pretty well. <laughs> but this here for the coax guys, spider beam, this needs to be a connector. Now, there is some double stress relief there so this is pretty thin coax it's thicker than the rg174 i used to use or rg316 that i use now so it's a little stronger but it's still going directly into the balloon case now if you're careful this will last a long time but if you're not very careful <laughs> sooner or later this is going to break. You know, someone will trip on the coax cable or something like that. Uh, the mask can fall and the coax get caught in a branch or you know, whatever. It's going to rip off uh, sooner or later. Uh, probably later than sooner, but still, there should be a connector here, not just the cable going directly in. But nothing's perfect and the other specifications are pretty interesting. I would have preferred a BNC, but that's me. The wire elements also go directly into the box, uh, you know, through this uh, stress relief, uh, double stress relief uh, thing there. It's like uh, a very thick uh, heat shrink tubing, something like that. Probably a little better than that, but it's still not a connector and it would have been much better to have connectors there, you know, with little um, butterfly uh, nuts. The wire seems to be of very good quality. It's uh, like uh, this silky type of wire for, uh, you know, the, what's usually used by most manufacturers for uh, antenna wires. So no problem there. Nice little insulators there, plastic. You have something to attach it to your mast. And by the way, this can be used with the uh, spider beam 12 meter mast and it goes to the bottom of the uh, top element. So it will sit at a height of 11 meters, uh, which is pretty high. I made an adapter here that slides onto the spider beam 12 meter pole and it slides down the uh, top element until it uh, reaches the bottom, you know, the top of the second element. And that's where you attach your antenna. I will put the link to the STL file in the uh, description, it's on Thingiverse. Of course you can use any other mast you want. The antenna is supposed to cover seven bands. Uh, without a tuner you can go on 40, 20. 15, 10, and 6 meters, and that's a lot of bands. That's five bands right there without a tuner. And you can go on 17 and 12 meters with a tuner. Now, I'm really curious to see if that's going to work, especially that I once built a, an off center fed dipole, a window antenna, and I had a lot of problems with the uh, RF current, a uh, common mode current on the coax shield, confirmed by the fact that when I was changing the length of the coax, uh, the SWR would swing wildly. And I was using a guanella, a dual guanella ballon, I think. Now, this antenna has a ballon, of course, I suspect one to one. Might be a guanella, I'm not sure. Uh, here's what's inside. Now, you can see uh, there are two toroid cores in there, but it's spotted, so uh, you know I can't tell what it is and how it's wound. So that's mystery, mystery balloon for you. <laughs> and we'll see if that works. It's also supposed to take 200 watts. So, uh, you know, you don't have to use it for QRP only. The length of the coax is 12 meters long. So, and that's the problem, you know, you, well, you can put a, a connector or barrel connector and extend it, of course, uh, but you're gonna have to put your table, operating table, or, you know, if you have the antenna at 11 meters and you have a 12 meter cable, that's not that's not a whole lot more. Now I'm not worried about the quality of the coax. Uh, you know, it seems thick enough for HF anyway. It's not for very high frequencies, so it doesn't really matter here. Uh, you're not going to have a lot of you know losses. 
the overall length of the antenna is 67 feet so a half wave on 40 meters but you can tell here just by looking at the uh, wire that uh, one side is longer than the other that's why it's an off-center fed dipole or asymmetrical dipole as uh, spider beam calls it and they suggest of course that you set it up as an inverted v with the mast in the middle so that's what we're going to do all right guys road trip today and I'm going to a place uh, called Kosol, the uh, Kosol Plateau, Plateau de Kosol. And I'm going to be driving by a uh, very nice village called uh, Gourdon. Ah, here is Marco calling me, I got, it. I got a reply to him. So I'm going to show it to you real quick. So that was worth a quick look, right? All right, I found Marco, F4TXR, TXR. <laughs> I don't know where you're stopping. Dans un autre contexte. Oui. <laughs> Dans un autre contexte, des, là, il doit y avoir des fossiles, tu vois, pour faire des, pa des passions de fossiles. Il doit y avoir des trucs super sympas. Ah oui, 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 ça, oui, à mon avis, oui. Dans, dans ces pierres, ces, 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 ces éboulis de pierre. Mais des, y a, y a, tu sais, il y a des grottes, il y a pas mal de grottes dans les environs aussi. Hein. Ouais, ça, ouais. ça m'intéresse. Ouais. Il, il doit y avoir des trucs, des trucs vachement intéressants à exploiter. Ouais. Well, Marco's got enough poles. <laughs> I have a better one, but uh, hey. Uh -huh. Marco is looking at the uh, Spider Beam 7 meters. <laughs> Just said he was going to buy one because of the, uh, the strong tip. So I attached uh, some paracord. I put uh, six meters of paracord on the short end of the antenna and four meters of paracord on the long end of the antenna uh, per the uh, manual. Here's the uh, spider beam seven meter mast with the uh, QRP guys uh, tri-band antenna that I loaned uh, to uh, Marco F4TXR. And it's, it's looking pretty good. And of course, I forgot my uh, super duper 3D printed adapter for my spider beam 12 meter mast. So that's why you should always have masking tape. Uh, that's the number one thing a ham radio operator should have, along with maybe some paracord. All right, so we have our antenna installed. It's uh, the sun is right there, it's, but uh, anyway, inverted V, and it's attached to the other end over there. And uh, we're going to operate from uh, this table here. All right, we are going to do a scan of the entire HF uh, band. Uh, not the best adapter uh, situation here because I didn't have a BNC. It's not a BNC on the uh, on the antenna. So well, it is what it is, <laughs> and let's just scan the whole uh, the whole of HF. Here's the uh, first uh, sweep. Uh, we can see the dips. The first one is uh, around seven megahertz, so the uh, forty meter band. The SWR is a bit high, but yeah, that could be environmental. Uh, we don't really know. We have a second dip uh, slightly above fourteen point three megahertz, so twenty meter band. Uh, it's a little bit uh, higher than you know it should be maybe, uh, but uh, again it could be environmental, it could be the positions of the wires, the ground. I mean it, it could be so many things. Uh, then we have um, the uh, 21 megahertz, so 15 meter band, a dip there uh, as well. Here is a look at the uh, 40 meter band. So SWR is about 2.3 uh, to one. Uh, which isn't great, but it isn't bad either. So uh, again, could be due to a lot of things. I suspect also my BNC adapter, you will see that later, 
uh, I have a problem with it. It's just not a good contact. So uh, that could be uh, really due to the uh, BNC adapter. But uh, the dip is definitely present. So uh, we are good on 40 meters. This one is a wider scan up to uh, 40, 6.8 megahertz, starting at 6.8. We clearly see the 40 meter dip. Uh, we see the 20 meter dip, uh, we see the 15 meter one, we see the, the uh, 10 meter, which go pretty, uh, pretty low, pretty good SWR there. Uh, we'll have to check the frequency. I think I forgot to do that though. Um, then we have, uh, well, we have one uh, around 42 megahertz. <laughs> it's too bad we don't have an allocation there. Actually, on uh, 14200, the SWR is 1.8 to 1. So that I consider that to be a good uh, SWR. On the uh, 15 meter band, it's about 2 to 1 on the whole band. So uh, that could, you mm, could use a tuner there, but you could uh, probably transmit safely uh, without one. And finally, a look at the uh, 15 meter, uh, 15 megahertz <laughs> band, uh, 6 meters. It's a bit high, uh, it's up to, uh, I think it was, uh, had 2.6. So, um, yeah, it's a bit high, but, you know, for military radio, it doesn't matter. But uh, we'll see later. I need to test this antenna in a different location. So this is really an incomplete test. But apparently, it seems to work on uh, multi-bands, and that's the goal. And of course, I had my adapter with me. <laughs> I just didn't think I did, but it's too late now. Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Okay, Bravo, Yankee, stand by. Italy, Uniform 8, Kilo <laughs> India, Alpha, your 59 Sierra Tango, Mike. Time is 3, bye bye. Charlie Tango, 3 Kilo November. Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Roger that, you are 5757 here in the south of France. Uh, my name is Gilles, Golf India Lima, QSL. Okay, Gilles, uh, can you confirm your call, Foxtrot 4, Whiskey Bravo Yankee, is that okay? Uh, that is affirmative, uh, Foxtrot 4, Whiskey Bravo Yankee uh, in the mountains north of Nice, uh, November, India, Charlie Echo. Over. Thank you very much and have a great day. Foxtrot for whiskey, bravo Yankee, over. So Marco using my uh, Xigu G1M. And you can hear him on my Minion SDR. <laughs> Apparently, they're also on 40 meters. Ah. Oui, Georges, merci beaucoup. Hein. Vous êtes 59 ici, 59 dans les montagnes au nord de Nice. Euh, donc, très bon signal. Je m'appelle Gilles, Golf India Lima. Je voulais juste vous souhaiter un bon week-end et une bonne chance pour le, le contest. Bonne journée de Foxtrot 4 Whisky. Bravo, Yankee, à vous. Bye bye. Bye bye. Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Fox, Florida 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee. Si que te de, qui est elle? Thank you very much. Uh, you're 5 9 here in the south of France. Uh, my name is Gilles, Golf India Lima. You have a great weekend. Not in the contest though, but uh, good luck. Okay, Gilles, by name Andy, Alpha November, Delta Yankee. Okay, Gilles, thank you very much. Uh, 73, bye bye, gracias. Thank you very much, good luck, 73.
I'm going to try CW on the uh, Minion SDR uh, 14060. Uh, ah, see, alright. Not a machine, not a radio for CW. Not the best. <laughs> Let's try a, a little faster, maybe that uh, that'll work better. Ah, no, very difficult. Uh, might be the RF current problem, as you know, as well. Not sure. On top of the uh, the relay uh, keying. I give up. All right. Well, the antenna seems to work pretty well. Uh, anyways, on uh, 20 meters, uh, I should have tried on 40 meters. I'm sure it's it's just fine. All right, so we noticed something peculiar here on the uh, Xigu G1M. Uh, Marco, uh, go ahead and, and transmit. Marco, transmit. There we go. So that might be because of uh, RF currents coming back on the uh, coax shield. Oh, it could have been the fact that I was operating on 6 meters FM with a delta loop right next to the spider beam antenna and using 50 watts. And by the way, I found a video explaining that the Minion SDR CW problems could be caused by a software issue. I will put the link in the description. But this is the Spider Beam uh, antenna review, not the Minion SDR review or the Xigu G1M. But the fact is that this antenna needs more testing, so there will be a part two. I need to try it in different environments. Well, you know, and use it on 40 meters and the other bands that it covers. But I didn't want to make you wait before you saw this video. It's, a, it's going to be a long video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss part two and uh, click the bell to be reminded. And until then, have a good one.